Hi, welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Stephen. My name is Stephen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I'm here with my dad. I'm Steve, Stephen's dad. I had a visual hallucination for the first time in about 10 years. I fell ill with schizophrenia about 12 years ago, and it's been a very hard time for me. But the hallucinations had gone away. Like I said, it's been like 10 years since I've had a visual hallucination or hallucination of any kind. I want to tell you about what that was like for me experiencing a hallucination, what I did about it, and where it happened and how this all went down. Yeah, that's a, it was a very uh, scary experience. It happened about a month ago, uh, mid-December. Uh, it's January 2024 right now. And so a, a, a visual hallucination is a sensory experience that's not real, right? That doesn't exist. And it can be as, as, as simple as, you know, flashing light or something more complex, like seeing a face or an object. That would be a visual hallucination. That is one of the positive uh, symptoms of schizophrenia. And another, you know, and so the visual hallucination should be distinguished from delusions, right? Delusions are also part of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, but a delusion is a false uh, fixed belief, yes. right? So this wasn't a false fixed belief. This was a visual hallucination. Stephen saw something. He saw an object, or I think he'll explain what he saw. Yeah, I'll explain in a sec. And, you know, it just sh shook him, and we'll, uh, we'll go through, you know, what, um, what, what we did. You know, in this last month, and uh, and talk more about this. But we want to show you first where, where this occurred, and just but real fast. You know, what causes these visual hallucinations? Right. This is again a sensory experience that does not exist. It only exists no. in the brain. And and you that, know, that said, it feels very real when it's happening. Right. So for the person, exactly, Stevens. I mean, the the person that that. Is experiencing this visual hallucination it, it appears absolutely real yeah. no question and you know it's it's you know the doctors and scientists really don't know what causes this with schizophrenia it's you know thought to be some type of abnormality in the brain maybe the neural processing uh, function in the brain uh, maybe the visual processing in the brain well, we really don't know the scientists don't know the medical doctors don't really understand this uh, very well but there's something going on in the brain that is causing this, this image to be seen as if it really exists in real life. So that's, that's what's happening. Uh, that's what happened to Stephen last month. Yes. Super scary. So Stephen, uh, as we're shooting this, this video here, yeah. uh, we're going to roll, I think, to um, your, your cell phone and I'm going to yeah. sh shoot some video of you. And we'll show you where it happened and I'll explain exactly what I saw. All right, so I'm here in uh, the breakfast nook in our house. This is where the hallucination of mine happened when I saw, well, it was a face uh, looking at me. And I was walking this way, right, and I was gonna go through the hallway to the TV room. But as I walked through here, I noticed something. So I went back. <laughs> and right there, right here, where these shoes are, right here, <laughs> there were no shoes. Right here, there was a face looking at me. No neck, no body, just a face, but like a shadowy face with this angled eyes glaring at me right here. No shoes. And that scared the heck out of me. Still does thinking about it. And I did a double take right here. And I looked, All right? Double take, what was that? Looked back again, went back, nothing, just shoes. The face was gone. So it was a very fast hallucination, visual hallucination, but nonetheless, it was enough to shake me to my core and scare the complete heck out of me. And I ended up, well, let me come back and sit down and I'll explain what I did about it after. So that was a visual hallucination I had where, although it was very brief, it scared the complete heck out of me when I saw a disembodied face looking at me where the shoes should have been in our cubby there. It's really hard to talk about actually. Uh, it's very unsettling and scary to see something that's so real 
to me. But knowing it's not real and that there's nothing there, just shoes. And what I saw was just a hallucination. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it, it's hard to, I think for someone that has not had an, an hallucination, I don't have any hallucinations. It's, it's hard to understand uh, this phenomenon and how scary that would be yeah. for someone that has schizophrenia. You know, my initial thought, I was in the house, um, Maria, or Stephen's mom, my wife, was in the house too. Uh, I think I was upstairs, Maria was upstairs, I believe. But anyways, uh, Stephen alerted us right away to this. Yeah. And it, fortunately, it was very fleeting. It was, it was there and gone. He looked back and it was gone. And, you know, sometimes we can see things you know, if you look in the sky, you can see different shapes and figures. Um, I mean, that's kind of a normal, it's a, it's a normal thing to, to be able to, to see different shapes in, in objects, right? even in, in trees, uh, maybe branch, the way the branches are coming uh, through, or in the sky, um, you see some, you know, the clouds and how things look. So at first I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's just, you know, it was that phenomenon, kind of a, kind of a normal phenomenon. But this was not, I mean, this was, you know, this was uh, extremely scary. Stephen was uh, uh, um, hyper um, anxious yeah. about this event. We called Stephen's psychiatrist. That's the okay. uh, first, try to calm Stephen down yeah. and call Stephen's psychiatrist. Fortunately, we got through almost immediately. She called us back in about 30 minutes. Stephen yeah. spoke to her. I did. Got an appointment the next day. Fortunately, uh, so Stephen had a one hour. So this happened on a Thursday. Yeah. Stephen had a Thursday afternoon. Stephen had a one hour appointment with his psychiatrist the next day, Friday, which was December fifteenth. And um, how did that psychiatric uh, appointment go, Stephen? Can you tell people? Yeah, I was incredibly stressed. So I don't remember it that well. I do remember she was happy that it was only a fast hallucination. Right, and then it lifted. It and then it lifted persist. right away, yeah. It wasn't something that was happening and wouldn't stop. Um, we also think I had a stress attack like the week before. It was probably a lot of just built up anxiety and stress um, that was causing, that caused this visual hallucination to the point where I was just so stressed that this happened. And I don't know. I actually, I don't actually know. This is really hard for me. Right. So, so uh, his psych Stephen psychiatrist um, that day um, ordered lab lab um, testing. Yeah. So his uh, blood plasma level and other um, blood levels could be uh, tested. So yeah. she wrote a prescription. We'll show you the prescription that she wrote, and uh, you'll see that it has. Um, we'll post that right now. Uh, it talks about, uh, so that's the uh, December 15th, 2023 prescription. It has the word hallucination there. It has a code. The code is the uh, international code for the diagnosis, yeah. for Stephen's diagnosis, which is uh, schizophrenia and unspecified. And so we filled that order, that lab order for a blood draw that day, that Friday. Yeah. The, I think your, uh, your appointment with uh, your psychiatrist was in the morning. Yes. Late morning, and then you had your blood drawn that afternoon, and and then the next, so then we had the weekend, and then Monday Stephen got in to see his general practitioner, I did. A, a doctor at uh, UCLA, so, and that was um, that was a little bit traumatic too. You know, all of a sudden Stephen is thrown in back into seeing the psychiatrist, seeing the general practitioner, maybe doing you know a workup with a with a with a neurologist. Yeah, it reminded me. A lot of when I had just fallen ill and I was getting all kinds of testing, all kinds of doctors doing all kinds of stuff like that. That didn't help my anxiety at all. It brought me kind of back to the feeling of when I was just falling ill and I had to do all these tests and see all these doctors, which was not helpful to my stress level, but it was important to be done nonetheless. Right. And, and this, so you know, there was an incredible amount of testing that, that Stephen went through when he fell ill 12 years ago. And that's what we're talking about now. Yeah. I mean, just a ton of different tests were performed at different hospitals, different neurologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, neurological testing yeah. to find out what was going on with him. Uh, he has um, treatment resistant uh, childhood onset schizophrenia. Yeah. And so I, I remember, you know, taking you uh, Stephen, you know, that, that Monday then to yeah. just the general practitioner at uh, UCLA 
your GP doctor yeah. to, you know, just to see how you're doing, you know, to let him know that you had seen the psychiatrist that previous yeah. Friday, a few days earlier. And I remember taking you up um, there to the UCLA clinic. Um, and I do remember talking to you about, you know, yeah, I, I, as I was thinking over there, I saw you, your face, it was, you were just kind of in a, kind of a zoned out mode. And I, and I remember telling you, you know, I, yeah, I know this, and I, I think we, we did talk about this, that this is stressful, going to see all these doctors again. Yeah. You know, there's all this overlay, and this causes a person with schizophrenia, or even with someone, you know, a care provider, a lot of stress. So we talked about that, and we did talk that about that, you know, all the testing that might be performed, because his, his psychiatrist was recommending some neurological testing, yeah. you know, that, that any of this testing that would be performed, this is optional for Stephen. Yeah. I was trying to make it clear to you, honey, that, or, that you know, it was your decision whether to, you right. know, and Which it is, and I will go through with the testing over the course of the next while because I think it's important. But I was also zoned out because I was so afraid of what happened. Because my anxiety level was so high, my stress level was so high, and because it was all a lot for me to handle and take in. So I think my zoned out effect was really just me being afraid. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And and to, to, to give everyone an understanding how you know, kind of a fleeting fi face like that, a fleeting vi visual hallucination c could cause someone so much stress. I think that's hard for, hard for someone not suffering from schizophrenia to understand. The, the, the reason that that causes so much stress, in, in part, and this is Stephen's story, I believe, is that, you know, Stephen was so ill for the first two years of his psychosis, and that was from age 12 to 14, that he was out of reality. So it was it was a full almost two years before Stephen had any insight that into his illness. So when someone is so ill that there's no essentially no insight for almost two years, that is a long time. We never we didn't know whether Stephen was ever going to come out of this and essentially come back into reality. He did. He was about 14 when he came back into reality. Yeah. So I'm uh, just trying to give you a, a, an explanation here of you know why this could be so. You know, so scary for someone, um, and so devastating. So you, you've you've really um, you've done well since then. It's been yeah. you know, about five yeah. five or six weeks past that event, and uh, no no more hallucinations. No more hallucinations. No other issues. And it could have been lack of sleep. You it's know, possible too. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna do some neurological testing, but only when Stephen wants to do it. You know, so we're not in a hurry. The thing is to reduce the stress. Yeah. Get, you know, try to get better sleep. Um, bring bring down the stress. That's the. That's that the key. is the key. High stress yeah. will lead to. Oh, high stress can lead to a lot of things, but it can definitely lead to at least for me, especially with schizophrenia. Visual hallucinations or stress attacks or just general stuff like that. Right. Another important thing is on my end, like go relax as best I can. Try to get my mind off what happened and do something fun and relaxing. I went and played a game and I watched a comedy. That helped. Right, and we didn't talk about this a lot. This is not something too, you yeah. you keep talking about. You can't, you know, this this type of um, situation, like with a visual hallucination, uh, especially since it hadn't we hadn't seen this in, in you know almost a decade with Stephen. Yeah, you know, it was very uh, stressful to to us as well as parents that. You know, maybe we're falling back into a situation. Which is also my worry too, that I was falling back into psychosis. Right, and I think that was the, that was the main yeah. reason then, Stephen, that you were so um, scared about this after yeah. it went away, quickly went away. It was scary that you were falling back into the, the psychosis. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I love you, Stephen. Love you too, So, Anything else to say there on, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, just... I think to yeah. elaborate on what you're saying, like talking about this, you can't talk through it necessarily, for me at least. I couldn't talk through it. It's too much to talk through. So talking about it at length would only make things worse for me. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. That's a, I think that's an excellent point, um, you know, because again, this is a sensory per perception, an abnormality in the, you know, abnormal sensory you know, perception. Yeah. And you can't, you can't talk through, you know, it occurred and the brain, you know, threw that, threw that uh, vision up there and projected it out <laughs> to where the shoes were. 
and that's what that's what it was you know but it's good to, to talk it through to that extent but with yeah. a professional a, sure. you know psychiatrist or sure. medical doctor or a psychologist or a uh, trained therapist yeah. so yeah so i think you know developing a, a strong support network is important Definitely. and being able to talk for me like openly to my parents and my psychiatrist and my doctor general practitioner doctor knowing that i can like, I didn't hide anything there. Like, I just explained everything, and that helps them to help me, as opposed to if I didn't say as much. Right, exactly. exactly. I mean, if I, I think if I had not told my parents, for example, I would have felt worse, uh, because I wouldn't have been able to have gotten this resolution, and I would have just dwelled on that fact constantly. Oh, that's an important point, right, to be, to be open about... Yeah. Be open about that. I mean, Stephen. So when that occur- when when this visual hallucination occurred, was there any sense that you weren't going to say that? Oh it yeah, right away. I was like, I can't say this is going to. First off, I can't say anything about this. This is way too much. If I say something, something bad will happen. That's not accurate. By not saying something, more bad things could happen. If I was actually falling into psychosis again, you, you got to catch that right right away. So because I said something. Granted, I wasn't falling back into psychosis, but if I were, there would have been something that we could have done about it. Right. Well, that's that's. I didn't even think about that, Stephen. That's a great um, insight there. That you know, to be open uh, in discussing what you're feeling and seeing, and for as a care provider and Stephen's uh, father, to be you know aware and open and and, and receptive to what he's seeing and, and not um, not not diminish it. Um, I did want to talk to Steven shortly after this and, and, and the next day and I didn't I wanted I wanted to talk to Steven about that well sometimes you you, know, you can look and you can see, your mind can play tricks with you True. that's a normal Especially experience if you're tired right that's a normal experience and I, I thought about trying to explain that and, and to Steven but I thought well no I mean he this is what he saw and I, I can't that's that's diminishing maybe what he his reality of what he saw this that's, was an actual hallucination for me. This was not just something. I'm tired. I saw something. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. There's a different feeling I get when that happens. It yeah. just feels different. Wow. Part of it is, you know, living with schizophrenia is just, you know, living your life. That's you know, very true. Trying to go on and live life as yeah. best you can. That's very true. So. With that, I think we're going to wrap up the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting or insightful maybe helpful and we both hope you have a happy and healthy rest of your day hope to see you in the next video bye bye well hope, hope to see you in the next video take care bye bye